Okay, we have just gotten the thumbs up after some technical difficulties on our side. So apologies to anybody who's out there watching and was waiting for us to come online. I welcome you uh, as I call everyone to order for our meeting on Tuesday, April 13th, a regular Board of Education meeting for El Segundo Unified School District. Uh, we will start tonight with the Pledge of Allegiance led by Member Wheaton. We can the rest of us mute ourselves while she leads us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you, Diana. And I will report out there was no action taken in closed session today. Uh, item 3C on our agenda, public communications. I will report to you that we have none to read out today. That moves us into our presentation section of the agenda, which uh, we begin with Benny Villa. Welcome, Benny. Thank you. Um, so to begin, pretty uneventful past couple of weeks. Um, of course, we had our spring break. Um, we're back in hybrid learning, which is really exciting. Um, we had our first uh, spirit day in a couple months uh, on the Friday before we left. It was blue and gold. We had about half percent participation, uh, which was, you know, it was nice. <laughs> And uh, the big event we have is the Senior Masquerade on Maine on April 30th. Uh, that'll be from 7 to 9. And it'll kind of be a dance without dancing if you, because of restrictions, but um, it'll be fun. And then finally, the scholarship packets for uh, seniors are due today. Uh, that is all. Okay. Thank you for that, Benny. I'm, I'm sure ASB and, and the school will make it a fun time, even if it's a dance without dancing. I'm sure. I have faith in you all. Um, thank you for your report. And now we'll move on to an update from the El Segundo Ed Foundation. Frank Glenn is here today and lovely to see you once again today, Frank. Yes, <laughs> thank you, President Tracy. Um, just a short report from me about the Academy by Ed. So the Academy by Ed is now open for enrollment for summer classes taking place between June 21st and July 23rd for TK through fifth grade. Um, you have um, five weeks in which you can enroll for a week long sports camp and summer camps, which take place from 8.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. in the afternoons. For the high school, uh, we have a large range of both recovery and advancement classes ranging from music appreciation all the way up to algebra two. These classes run for five weeks starting on June 14th and finishing on July 16th. And enrollment is available online at esedf.org. All classes are conducted by credentialed ESUSD teachers and the proceeds go directly back to benefit programs at the schools. Thank you. All right, thank you, Frank. And, and congratulations again, another great board meeting this morning yourself. Thank you very much. Lovely to see so many amazing volunteers coming together and trying to make things happen for our schools. We are very grateful for all their service and for yours leading it. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Now we'll move on to another presentation. This one on technology and digital learning from Ed Services. Dr. Moore, would you like to introduce further? Yes, I uh, would like to introduce uh, Mrs. Marisa Janicek, our Assistant Superintendent of Educational Services. And this has become an annual update regarding educational technology, both hardware, software, and certainly professional learning. So we're very excited about the Ed Services team being with us this evening. Welcome, Ms. Janicek. Thank you, Dr. Moore. Good evening, President Miller Zarnacki, members of the board, and Dr. Moore. Thank you so much for having us. I am very honored to be presenting with an amazing team of leaders that have all come together to support our teachers, students, and families with pure thoughtfulness, creativity, utilizing data and research. 
Tonight, you will hear from our Executive Director of Information Technology, Mr. Gauna, our Director of Innovation and Student Supports, Dr. Plotkin, our Personalized Learning Coach, Mr. Branlin, and our Teacher on Special Assignment, Mrs. Leonard. Next slide, please. Our presentation this evening will provide you with an update on how we adapted throughout the pandemic. The work that started prior to the pandemic that really helped us use innovative strategies to support our students overnight, unbelievably overnight, and the work we plan to continue to do to build on the successes, engaging our students in a newer landscape. I would now like to turn it over to Dr. Plotkin, who will provide an overview of some of the adaptations that took place in ESUSD. Thank you, Ms. Janicek. Uh, next slide, please. So in terms of adaptations, Ms. Janicek noted the work that went on before we had a shift in the pandemic. Uh, and we've been lucky here in, or fortunate in ESUSD that we've kind of always been ahead of the ed tech curve. And this goes back 10 years to when we started our individualized technology initiative that put hand, uh, devices in the hands of every secondary student. So when it came time to adapt, when everything kind of collapsed in March of 2020, we had those tools available to us and we use them. We took some data, we learned from them. Uh, next slide, please. And the data, what the data showed us from the parents and the students and the staff in the spring when we first shut down is there was some opportunity to really improve what we had and to align. So one of the things we did was align our learning management systems to be consistent across grade levels and across schools. And you can see those uh, learning management systems there at the bottom, just their logos. Another thing that we were able to implement quickly is new educational technology to support teaching and learning. So we got data from teachers and from students that, um, for example, reading was one area that teachers were worried about. So we were able to uh, access the Lexia platform. Our teachers uh, learned it quickly. We pushed it out to our students. We uh, garnered a high quality program for our 6 through 12 distance learners in ASU Prep Digital. And then we also aligned uh, in 2020-21 our video conferencing platform so everyone was on Zoom. Students, teachers, families know that like the back of their hand now. And I'll talk a little bit later about the expansion of our AMPT program, but I'm happy to report that our professional learning did not stop when the pandemic hit, but it actually grew and we'll, we'll discuss that in a, a few slides. Next slide, please. So what you can see in some of these numbers or what these numbers illustrate is that we, we have we adopted these new technology programs and tools and our teachers took them and ran with them. So there was really this opportunity that we had that the pandemic brought us. For example, the high school, there's 100% of teachers now using Schoology, the learning management system is brand new to them. So shout out to our high school teachers that in this pandemic learned this new learning management system, implemented it across the board and evenly. I I'd mentioned the Lexia reading platform. We have 1,170 students. It's open to all students, grades TK through five and some select in uh, middle and high school. And we, as I noted, we expanded our teachers who are participating in the AMPT learning cohort. Next slide, please. So what I, the next few slides kind of just what I want to illustrate to you is that our teachers in this time took the technology and they utilized it. So these were not tools that just kind of we purchased that sat on the shelf. This is examples of teachers in our AMP cohort who in altitude learning is where I, I pulled some of these data that show the, the badges they earn. And, and what that means is they've completed a certain number of tasks in altitude to kind of be the all stars of this platform. So these are our AMP teachers who earn certain badges Next slide, please. These are our Center Street uh, star teachers, grades three through five, who are using Altitude, who earn these badges. Next slide. This is Richmond Street. And the next slide will be middle school, where you can see widespread use. So props to our teachers who learned these new platforms. Uh, they were brand new to most of our teachers use them uh, for the success of students and to support their teaching. Next slide, please. And what this chart shows, you, there's just some numbers, it's a little bit technical to understand, but what it shows <clears throat> are various tasks uh, within the platform. 
And what you can see is that teachers are really utilizing this. So Altitude is a very student centered platform. It allows for some personalized learning. So I'm just going to take one of these stats out under the evaluation row. 103,000 cards assigned. And a card is basically uh, an assignment, a personalized assignment that the teacher has created and pushed out to students. So uh, we're happy to report that the technology that we've chosen, the shifts we've made, the teachers have really delved in, they've accessed that professional learning and they're using it and the students are benefiting. Next slide, please. And really to support that, you know, we can't just leave them completely to their own, own devices. We have had a lot of professional support, not only for the staff, but for students and parents. And so at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Poonam Leonard, who can describe those supports a little further. Thank you, Dr. Plotkin. Next slide, please. As a district, we work diligently to meet the moment by rolling out Schoology, Altitude, and Seesaw to support collaboration and creativity amongst our teachers and students, as well as providing parents with live information on their child's progress. Additionally, we dived into digital tools such as Padlet, Flipgrid, and Lexia to provide our students with voice and choice. Through Zoom, we created an inclusive and welcoming environment for our students. We used various technologies such as Mentimeters and Pear Deck to gauge our students' social emotional well being. Breakout rooms were utilized to provide students with an opportunity to interact with one another, build relationships, and support academic dialogue. Furthermore, we used Panorama to get a thermometer read on how our students and staff were doing. For staff, we strategically scheduled ongoing professional development and our instructional coaches held weekly office hours to provide tech and ped pedagogical support based on teacher needs. Our students were successfully onboarded onto the new learning management system. Instructional coaches and teachers worked to develop tutorials to support our students as they navigated a new way of learning. Our fabulous IT department created a direct line of communication for our students to seek help when troubleshooting technical issues. Lastly, for our parents, we held informational nights and workshops. Some of the topics covered were around core subject areas, social emotional support, how they could support their child at home, managing Zoom fatigue and motivation, and learning the new platforms. Workshops and other various topics were presented by admin leaders and ESUSD educators. Again, our IT department provided a direct line of communication to troubleshoot issues for our families. And now handing it over to Mr. Gauna. Thank you, Ms. Leonard. Um, the information technology team understands how vital our technology initiatives and vision are to our school district. The transformation of learning is the end goal by creating a flexible and reliable technical learning environment. We are committed to supporting our teachers and students initiatives using our technology devices solutions and network infrastructure for this goal. Next slide. So tech by the numbers, you may notice the increase in our devices as well as an increase in several of our technical platforms over the past year. Our laptops have increased um, during the stay home order. We provided laptops for our district office admins and also the remote admins at each of the school sites. You notice we've increased our Chromebook uh, inventory and uh, with by doing this, we're a true one-to-one -one school district. When I mean one-to-one uh, -one is every uh, student at El Segundo has a device. K through five has a Chromebook device and six through 12 has an iPad device. So we could, we could always say that El Segundo is a true one-to-one -one school district. Um, we've added ac um, access points for our inventory. We also added more security cameras at the district um, throughout the district. The two technical platform, uh, platforms are Zoom and also Microsoft Office 365 for all of our faculty and, and staff. I like to mention, even though the numbers have increased, the IT team did not miss a beat in supporting our staff, students, and parents. Next slide. So I've broken down our completed technology projects in the last two years into two types of projects, Measure ES and also Network Information Services projects. Uh, the network tech, uh, the new teacher laptop stations investment was a victory for the district. Um, it played a critical need when it came to the new distance learning solution. We installed new audio and video technology for all classrooms throughout the district. 
With the new AV, teachers and students can cast their laptops, Chromebooks, and, 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 and also iPads wirelessly. They can also use, uh, use the new wireless microphones with the new installed sound system. I'd like to mention the technology bond projects provided the district to standardize all technology equipment for all classrooms. This was our main goal. Uh, now technology support is now more efficient and effective for the IT team. We install new cameras district wide, which falls under our bond security commitment to our stakeholders and also to our community. And we also install, install a new audio and video technology for our school uh, district boardroom. Next slide. So completed projects for network information services. So we improved our network infrastructure with new network switches and wireless access points district wide. We've implemented a new email security solution to secure against ransomware and potential harmful attacks on our email server and accounts. We purchased new Chromebooks uh, K through second. We've implemented a new device management for all of our iPads and all of our Windows laptops for the entire school district. Ongoing initiatives. So this is, these are all of our summer projects that are coming up. We, this summer, we're planning on purchasing new Chromebooks for our third through fifth graders and also six through 12 for iPads. Moving all of our faculty and staff to the new and shorter ESUSD domain, ESUSD.net. No longer going to be using that, that long ESUSD.k12.ca.us. We're installing a new PA and Bell system district wide. And we're going to continue installing new cameras, wireless access points, network switches, and audio and video equipment for our Measure ES projects. And hopefully upgrade all, our, all of our internal fiber upgrade um, to complete our network infrastructure goals. And, and that is it from the IT department. And thank you, everyone. And now I'd like to pass it to our to the presenter, to Dr. Plotkin. Thanks, Mr. Gauna. Uh, so, you know, during the pandemic and the shutdown, we're still true to our mission, transforming education for a changing world. And we want to make sure that kept going. And one of the best examples of that is our AMPED Learning uh, Initiative. Uh, next slide, please. So I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about what that is. It started. Uh, three years ago, when we were looking at those high effective practices uh, across, we visited schools across the state. We talked to people in Virginia and Georgia and places were really doing innovative things uh, mentioned in emerging research, uh, research. And AMP really started as what stands for autonomy, mastery, and purpose, which is at the core of what drives student motivation. And so, uh, next slide, please, Mr. Gowden. Uh, it really started with about just a few teachers in the spring of 2018 expanded to 10 teachers who are really engaging with our partners in these innovative teaching and learning practices. Uh, in 2021, we added 10 more teachers. So we had 10 more teachers. This is an opt in and it's a lot of work. Um, it's a lot of learning, but it, it, there's also a lot of payoff. And so, like, I, as I said before, you know, we had a 100% increase on the number of teachers and we hope to continue to expand that uh, next year. So, at this point, so you can learn a little bit more about what those teachers are doing and how they're engaging. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Brandlin, who is our personalized learning specialist. Thank you, Dr. Plotkin. So this year, our focus has been on planning and implementing competency based assessments. These competency based assessments involve students demonstrating mastery of key knowledge and skills. These assessments enable students to reflect on their learning and develop actionable steps as they continue to grow as learners. The professional development pathway listed on this slide illustrates our ongoing work with our AMP team this year. Next slide. At the beginning of the school year, as well as then again in January, AMP teachers self-reflected on their ability to plan competency-based assessments to further support student learning. As we can see with the data from August to January, students ability, or teachers' abilities continue to grow and they feel more and more confident in planning these types of assessments. Next slide, please. Also, as the data shows, most AM teachers are fairly confident in their ability to implement competency-based assessments. While we strive to continue to grow in this area, we all feel that it has been a very rewarding journey thus far. On the next few slides, you will see examples of various components as it relates to AMPT. Next slide, please. One component of AMPT is building learner agency. Learner agency is about shifting the ownership of learning from teachers to students. Another way of thinking of this is when learners have, quote, the power to act. For example, in math classes at ESMS, students complete a formative skills-based assessment 
based on a particular standard or skill. Based on that, their score, they are afforded the opportunity to practice these skills in order to achieve mastery and or extend their thinking and receive peer feedback. This puts students needs and interests at the forefront of their learning. Next slide, please. At the core of AMPT is creating meaningful, authentic assessments. In our classrooms, these authentic assessments involve creating task, projects, and learning environments that mirror real world issues. One example of this is in Ms. Slama's English 11 class, where students are given the choice of creating their own original short story that fits a specific genre, or taking the role of a lawyer in prosecuting or defending a character in a story. Prior to students being assessed, they had the opportunity to choose a learning path that interests them the most. Each path has its own calendar and checklist, so students, uh, so students can pace themselves and monitor their progress against success criteria. Next slide, please. Mastery-based learning is an instructional approach where students need to demonstrate a deep level of understanding of a topic or subject area. In language and literature classrooms at ESMS, Teachers create writing tasks with rubrics that align with standards and skills. Following a written assessment, teachers provide written as well as verbal feedback for students. Students then take this feedback and make improvements. This allows for growth over time as students are consistently reflecting on their work and tracking their progress. Next slide, please. A fundamental part of personalized learning, as well as our ANTH initiative, is flexible pacing. Flexible pacing allows students to progress at a steady, and differentiated pace that is appropriate for them. In eighth grade science classes, students are given a roadmap and a checklist in order to see upcoming assignments and assessments throughout a unit. Uh, science teachers meet with students in small groups and one-to-one -to, -one to check in and provide support. The objective is to ensure that students are making progress and demonstrating their knowledge and skills. Next slide, please. So we have a lot to celebrate with AMP this year. Students are progressing towards mastery of the standards using the Altitude Learning Platform, taking ownership, reflecting on their learning, and setting goals for themselves. Additionally, teachers are confident in creating activities and authentic assessment tasks that engage and challenge students. These shifts in our instruction, these shifts in our instructional practices have shined in large part due to our partnership with Altitude Learning. It is a great honor to collaborate and learn from fellow AMP teachers. We look forward to the next chapter in our AMP journey as a district. And now I'll turn it over to Mrs. Janicek. Thank you, Mr. Branlin. With everything you have just heard, I hope you will all agree that we have such an incredibly talented team in ESUSD. Our teachers have transformed over and over and continue to shift to support our students and parents in meaningful ways. By working together and sharing the successes, we truly believe we can continue building and supporting our students to leave ESUSD into the future with the tenants of the graduate profile as leaders, learners, individuals, communicators, and thinkers. Next slide, please. In order to continue this, we need to empower our own very skillful teachers. We are working to build a district team of educators that are representative of all of our schools to create and collaborate in an effort to provide meaningful professional development for all of our teachers. That in turn will engage and support all of our students by creating learner-centered classrooms, promoting deep thinking, problem-solving skills, confidence, and resilience. Through this team called Empower ESUSD, we will analyze input from students, parents, and teachers provided through focus groups, assessment data, and surveys to help find what to continue what worked really well during this time of change, and what to let go of moving into the years ahead. This is a very pivotal year, and we've seen some things that have really, really enhanced our learning. We have also learned so much as a school district and a community. There have been challenges, but there have also been great strides in education that we just don't want to forget. By providing personalized professional development, we can strengthen our strategies in the classroom to support all of our students in transforming education for a changing world. Next slide, please. We'd like to close with this ancient Chinese proverb that we feel encapsulates our team of teachers, classified employees, administrators, board members, and community. This was not an easy year, but we are so proud of how we navigated the winds by adapting and embracing new opportunities for our students. Next slide, please. 
so thank you so much for all of your support and for allowing us to present on behalf of our amazing educators this evening. We're here to answer any questions that you may have. Great. Thank you, Ms. Janicek and everybody who participated in that lovely presentation. So many good facts and figures and just great success. Um, if we can go back, let me get to everybody's view back on here. Any comments from board members? Raise your hand if you would like to speak. All right. Zero, none. I, I, oh, there's well, I was mine. just going to say, I want to keep all my kudos for the end in my comments. So I'll, I'll do it then. <laughs> great job on the presentation. All right. Seeing a silent room, I will say that everybody, oh, Dr. Moore. Yes, Dr. Well, Moore. I, I just want to echo what uh, Ms. Janicek is saying. I couldn't be prouder of these teachers. Our teachers have embraced and been flexible and patient and embraced the change and really stepped up. And it has been ever changing. And you know, our elementary folks have adjusted to hybrid starting in December. Our secondary folks just came back on the AB schedule in March. And whatever change it comes before them, they step up to the plate, they embrace it, and they themselves talk amongst and are empowered to say, okay, we've got this. And so I just want to say great job at services team. I couldn't be prouder. So proud of the work we're doing. Aima? I do also want to comment on the elementary level where the kids are less independent and need the support of teachers. I have to say, just in my case, I have Miss Leonard and just um, and reaching out. So everything was pushed through the platform, but going that extra step and reaching out and contacting the parents to help them get engaged, because for some of the parents you are working or maybe you're at home and you're adapting to this pandemic, but going above and beyond to ensure that the parents are engaged, that they understand what's happening on the platforms, And if they aren't um, necessarily engaged with the platforms, taking the extra step to reach out to provide the support that ultimately supports our students. I think that the thing that was um, special, there were a lot of things touched on in this in this presentation, but I think the thing that, that caught my eye was that we're a one-to-one -one district. And, and it is true, if you think about it, on March 13th, I always like to tout Friday the 13th, um, we all left, we all left and everybody had had a device. And if you were at the elementary level, you were given the opportunity to pick up a device. And um, I think that that's really important because most districts were scrambling. I spoke to a friend who lived in Arizona and they just said they were just gonna start next semester. And I was floored that they would give up a full semester. So um, those things are important. We take for granted the gifts that we have me included. And um, this is just a way to humble our hearts to say, great job, great job school district for um, for getting it together and not even knowing what we needed to get together because it, it hit us all instantly. Emily? Well, we've got uh, the whole tech team here. We've got everyone at the think tank, um, you know, with the, Bond money and various other monies that, you know, the district, the board has um, set aside and we've purchased a lot of, 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 you know, technology things. You know, how are, are we already behind? <laughs> yeah, I know that is an ever changing, you can never keep up on. Um, I'm just curious that, you know, to hear from you guys where we need to be looking um, resource wise for technology that's coming. Um, I, I can speak to that. I, I feel like we're very fortunate to have our grants from our neighbors, Chevron. Our devices are up to date and will continue to be up to date. Um, I think a big part of it is really making sure our infrastructure is in place so that we have the seamlessness to keep everybody connected and continuing their great work. So I think we're in a really good place. There are some things we need to continue to build on as always. Um, to make sure that we're moving forward and innovating without gaps and frustration. So thank you for asking that, Emily. Oh, you know, even just now, you know, we were, we had the spinning wheel of death as board members were trying to get on and 
No, th those are real things. I think that's what some surrounding districts, you know, they bought the device and just threw them out there quickly years ago, and we saw how that went. Um, and, and so I think we've always been mindful and doing, but um, I think it's important that this team or, you know, it, that we keep on it. We, we don't celebrate yeah, yeah, yeah. and I know Danny's always looking at the infrastructure you know we we've talked about our things in the recently um, to, to do but I think that is a conversation that um, always needs to come before the board because I think sometimes we just think oh we just passed something and it's been a year and things have just changed um, so I hope you guys you know keep us in the loop and let us know where things are at um, I think you guys talk about stuff on the tech team a lot. That doesn't mean we get it. <laughs> so please keep us. Um, I think when it comes to devices, you brought up a good point in regards to keeping up with technology, right? Keeping up with technology for our laptops, you know, iPads, Chromebooks, um, security cameras. We, I, I think we do a great job in regards to finding out what's new and what how we need to keep updated when we regard regards to our initiatives. Not everything um, that we find out is if we update an we'll say an iPad, we update a certain program and it sometimes it bites us in the butt in regards to, hey, it could break something. I hate to say that, but you know, sometimes and then we're scrambling, right? We're we're going to the point where we're scrambling in regards to trying to keep up, well, there's an update up there. But when it comes to the devices, I think we do a great job in making sure that working together with Ed Services, hey, we got our lease coming up. We have our, our iPads coming up, at least coming up. So we know that the devices that we need to make sure our students and our staff are always up to date. Um, our infrastructure always needs uh, needs to be, imp be improved, and that's a great point. It starts from the infrastructure, right? We have a great infrastructure when it comes to our fiber uh, links to going to our data center. We have a fiber links that goes between our buildings, but we still got uh, room for improvement. We got to in, uh, upgrade our internal fiber, and that goes back to to support our you know our cameras, support our uh, our our iPads, our Chromebooks, anything wireless. So I think there's always room for improvement, and I know um, Dr. Moore and the cabinet team members uh, understand where I come from when it comes to infrastructure. We got to have that robust infrastructure. So I. I I think within the next couple of months, we're going to be looking into upgrading our network closets, network uh, um, cabling when it comes to our fiber. So I think we're in a good place. Thanks, Danny. Yeah, I, I have deep trust for your looking out for all that stuff. And, and you know, I, I look at other districts that have broadband issues like outside of their school that I'm grateful. We in El Segundo are pretty darn connected and, and have access. Even even our, our permit students who are not in El Segundo proper, you guys have made the effort to get them connected, and that is invaluable. So thank you for that. And, and again, constantly innovating from every level of, of staff and then working through it with parents and students who are not always ready and willing with open minds to learn the new stuff, but they have. And you guys have done a tremendous job, like bringing everybody up with you and and making them all successfully move forward. So thank you. And and yeah, we're always here to hear what's next and what we need to do to support you. So please keep us posted and, and otherwise know we have great faith. So thank you. Okay. Well thanks everyone. It was a good, wonderful conversation. We will move on now to our consent agenda. And I'm wondering are there any items in there that need to be pulled? Anybody? If not, I will ask for a motion to approve all items. We have a lofty list, A through X today. Uh, Mike, do I see I'll a hand? Motion, I'll motion that we uh, move to approve the consent agenda items A through X. Is that correct? A through X okay. as they're presented. Okay, and a second from Daima. Right. Any discussion on any of these items? No. Okay. Lots of lots and lots of good measure yes stuff going on there, and plenty of other good business as a bonus. Uh, all right. If no further discussion or any discussion, we'll move into voting. Benny, your advisory vote. Aye. And Mike, your vote. Aye. 
Naima? Aye. Paulette? Aye. Emily? Aye. And I will vote aye. Motion carries 5 0 on consent agenda items A, consent agenda items A through X. Okay, action items 6A, acceptance of gifts. Madam Clerk, would you like to read that out? Yes, I would. Oh, oh I'm, I'm <clears throat> in accordance with Board of Education policy number 3290, the Board of Education may accept gifts as long as there is no conflict with the education code or other public laws. The school district have received generous donations from El Segundo Middle School PTSA of $680.50 to be utilized at the middle school. The donations do not conflict with any education code or public law regarding except, um, acceptance of gifts. I move approval. Okay, uh, we have a motion for approval. Mike, that looks like a second from you. I'll take that. Any discussion on this item? All right, let's vote. Benny, your advisory vote. Aye. Mike? Aye. Daima? Aye. Paulette? Aye. And Emily? Aye. I will vote aye. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you, ESMS PTSA. All right, uh, the next item is approval of the Williams quarterly report. Dr. Moore. Yes, for third quarter, we have no complaints registered in the area of lack of instructional materials, facilities, teacher vacancy, or misassignments. I recommend approval. Okay, thank you. Motion for approval. I'll move Emily. approval. Okay, thank you, Emily. And a second. Oh, I was close. I'm going to say Daima on that one. <laughs> Daima, second. Any discussion on this item? Okay, we've seen well, these before. Yeah, oh, no. just, just to say, you know what, as a district, you know, I, as a teacher and as an old administrator, the, El Segundo does an extremely good job in regards to this aspect and the requirements under the Williams uh, reports and, and the act itself. Um, and so uh, it does an amazing job in making sure that our kids have what they need. And so um, it's just good that there's no complaints or anything because um uh, in other districts they're they're quite often and quite you know quite often and, and and quite a lot and so it's a good sign that um our district in admin and at the school sites our kids are getting what they need uh to function in the classroom so just want to make sure the public hears that that uh, we're doing an excellent job in this district at that level so excellent point Yes, very appreciative of all of our staff that sees to it that all these things are met and exceeded. Um, okay, let's vote then. Benny, your advisory vote. Aye. And Mike? Aye. Daima? Aye. Paulette? Aye. Emily? Aye. And I for me, motion carries 5-0. Item 6C, approval of master contract with Kids in Motion LLC for provision of special education services in 2021-22. Dr. Moore. Yes, this is uh, being proactive as we look to our next school year, anticipating what our needs will be in the area of physical therapy. Uh, Dr. Plotkin is recommending a contract with Kids in Motion, and this would be to supplement any other services and would be specific based on a student's IEP. Thank you for the explanation. Motion for approval. Paulette. And a second from Mike. Great. Any discussion on this item? Okay. Seeing none, let's move into voting. Benny, your advisory vote? Aye. And Mike? Aye. Daima? Aye. Paulette? Aye. Emily? Aye. And I, from me as well, motion carries 5-0. Item 6D, approval to enter into an agreement with Sodexo America, LLC. Dr. Moore? 
Yes, Sodexo America provides food management services for the district and being a small district, uh, it is extremely helpful to have someone who is um, specifically calibrating the nutritional value, making sure that we have a balanced meal offered and uh, training our staff as well as uh, in these times specifically making sure that we're taking advantage of any and all free commodities that are out there. So uh, the um, specific aggregate annual cost is based on predicated number of meals and this would not exceed that amount. Uh, I recommend approval. Okay, thank you. Motion for approval. Daima, thank you for that. And a second from Paulette. Thank you. Discussion on this item. I, uh, you know, I think uh, Susan Aceves would rightly echo <laughs> Dr. Moore's. You know, for years she took on trying to do the business office and kind of help um, with the meals of, of our, our schools. And it's just a lot to ask of of uh, our staff to to be experts in everything. So I, I'm, I'm, I was very happy years ago when we kind of moved to this and I, I, I agree with Dr. Moore. I just I, like to I point agree. out, oh, sorry, Tracy. I just like yeah. to point out that it's, you know, having a outside company like Sodexo uh, come in and manage this the way they are is kind of common practice now for districts in the sense of you know the 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 manpower and the uh, or the power that it takes in uh employment and that to run it yourself um just isn't cost effective anymore and so this is the great this is a great way to address that be in compliance and make sure that uh the food is done well and prepared by a professional company so um, i just hope that you know the, the the community understands that while it looks excessive it isn't in the sense of what it is and that the checks and balances on this that come from the state it's very regulated and that um you know it's not just our district making it easy on ourselves it's actually uh, you know a benefit for everyone involved as stakeholders when we take on a contract like this yeah, I think the, the buying and the managerial power is is impressive and, and we still have our, our own workers here who help make everything presentable for our students and I appreciate their being here in the, in the system as well. So thank you to everybody who's thought this out really well and has been making it happen, especially now in, in times when we are feeding even more than usual in some cases. I think it's been amazing to have this option. So, all right. No further discussion. We will vote. Benny, your advisory vote. Aye. Mike. Aye. Daima. Aye. Paulette. Aye. Emily. Aye. And I from me. Motion carries five zero. All right. Our next item six e approval to enter into agreement with JR Universal Construction Incorporated for the high school library renovation project 21-005. Dr. Moore. Yes, it's with a great deal of enthusiasm that we bring this item to you this evening. Um, as the board is aware, we had set a budget of uh, a million two uh, for this project, and uh, we have a wonderful team at Teleku and certainly uh, Dr. Ferris as executive director of HR and facilities. And we actually had competitive bid process and the bid is actually under budget. Uh, so there could be some cost savings realized there. So we bring before you tonight uh, an agreement with JR Universal Construction to complete the high school library project. And if approved this evening, we hope to get started the first week in May. Okay, thank you. Do I have a motion for approval? And that's from Paulette. Thank you, Paulette. And a second. Thank you, Daima, for your second. Any discussion on this item? No, I think we're we're ready to keep doing great things for our district with our much appreciated bond money. So with that, let's vote. Benny, your advisory vote. Aye. Mike? Aye. 
Naima? Aye. Paulette? Aye. Emily? Aye. And I will vote aye. Motion carries 5-0. Sorry, Benny, you won't be here to see that. You'll be gone by the time we get this project done. Um, but you can come back and visit as, a, as an alumni. Um, all right, our next item is 6F, approval to enter into agreement with Modern Construction Management Incorporated, DBA MCM Construction Incorporated, for the Center Street Library Modernization Project. Dr. Moore. Yes, uh, for this project, we had a construction budget set at $417,309 uh, with an overall project budget of 642000 And we actually have a base bid that also came in below the construction budget. So we enthusiastically bring before you uh, the Modern Construction Management Incorporated MDM, also known as MDM. Recommend approval. Okay, thank you. Is there a motion for approval from the board? Emily, give us a first, yes. And the second from someone. Paulette would be that someone. Thank you, Paulette. Any discussion on this item? All right, let us move into voting then. Benny, your advisory vote. Aye. Uh, Mike? Aye. Daima? Aye. Paulette? Aye. Emily? Aye. And I will vote aye. Motion carries 5 0. All right. Our next item is 6G, approval of contract change order three to the agreement with AMG and Associates Incorporated for the 20 002 summer modernization product projects. Dr. Moore, tell us more about that. Uh, yes, specifically um, the change orders we bring forward to you this evening um, total roughly $34,000. Um, specifically, uh, close to 16,000 were at Richmond Street for the um, welcoming new entry security vestibule. Uh, in addition, we had a change order due to a rooftop mechanical unit uh, to operate the administration building. Uh, and that was just under $18,000. And then the athletic department at the high school requested additional striping for our sports floor uh, for practice volleyball and basketball at the South gym. And that was just under uh, $600. So this will bring an additional uh, 34,000 in change orders and the board had previously approved uh, $208,000 for other items that you previously approved. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, do I have a motion for approval? I'll let, that was close. I'm gonna give Daima the second on that. All right, we have a first and second. Is there a discussion on this item? Okay, we've heard about change orders. We are familiar with them and we will vote. Uh, Benny, your advisory vote. Aye. Mike? There was an aye, we didn't hear it, but I saw it. Oh. Uh, there you go. Taima? Aye. Paulette? Aye. Emily? Aye. And aye for me as well. Motion carries 5-0. Item 6H, approval of pay rates for extended school year and learning loss mitigation program. Dr. Moore? Uh, yes, for our um, students uh, with um, disabilities, we offer extended school year program, as well as we will be offering a two week learning loss program. We are in the process of identifying students for that program. And these are the specific pay rates that we are recommending uh, that would go to our teachers. Obviously, we want our most best and talented teachers working with students regarding any learning loss. And so we have a graduated pay rate. Uh, this is kind of the new going trend among school districts to uh, award um, hourly rate to teachers um, to have our own staff teaching uh, these important programs. So I enthusiastically recommend approval. Okay, thank you. Motion for approval on this item. Mike, got it with your first and a second from Emily. Thank you. Any discussion on this item? Oh, 
Wait, Mike wants to talk, but he's on mute. Sorry, Sorry if I can just add some anecdotally to this is, um, you know, as a DS provider in special education, um, the ESY is important to maintaining students' uh, welfare. And so, um, finding the right people and having our faculty uh, be entertained to stay during those summer months and teach those students, even it's to remediate or just to continue their progress is so essential. And, um, you know, I've had the fortunate opportunity of in, in my uh, years in the community to be able to serve in that capacity here in the school district, but it would better be served by somebody that's already working with those students than somebody temporary like myself even coming in with the experience I have. And so being able to compete um, over those summer months is essential. And so, um, you know, I, I just wanna tell everybody, I think this is money well spent. I think the teachers deserve it um, that take on these assignments during their uh, summers and for the extended school year for those students that need that quality education. So uh, just wanted to express that is being uh, you know a part of it that this is really a, a good move okay thank you for the comments and insight all right any further discussion all right let's vote benny your advisory vote aye and mike aye daima aye paulette aye emily aye and I will vote aye. Motion carries 5-0. Item 6-I, approval of amended job description, extended school year <laughs> principal. Dr. Moore? Yes, this amendment increased the compensation for uh, the extended school year principal who would be providing administrative services as well as ensuring we are COVID compliant. Great, if I may have a motion for approval. Uh, Paulette? And Daima will have the second on that. You guys are you guys are in tandem tonight. Very nice. Um, all right. Any discussion on this item? Okay. Let's vote. Benny, your advisory vote. Aye. And Mike. Aye. Daima. Aye. Paulette. Aye. Emily. Aye. And I will vote aye. Motion carries five zero. Our last item on the action list is item J, acceptance of the actuarial study for other post-employment retiree benefits. Dr. Moore? Yes, I have nothing to add, just recommend acceptance. Okay, can I have a motion for acceptance? No, oh, Paulette, we'll give you that one. And Mike, the second on that, thank you. Any, any discussion necessary? No, all right. Benny, your advisory vote? Aye. And Mike, your vote? Aye. Daima? Aye. Paulette? Aye. Emily? Aye. And I will also vote aye. Motion carries 5-0. All right, uh, information pending action tonight. We have one item, consideration of revision to board policy on advertising and promotion, BP 1325. Dr. Moore, tell us about that. Yes, our California School Boards Association recommends a revision to this policy. And specifically, the impact of the policy was uh, brought on by nutritional regulations that have to do with making sure that there are no conflicts with the school lunch program or the breakfast program uh, and making sure that we uh, follow all nutritional guidelines uh, when there is food on campus. Okay, thank you for that. May I have a, oh, we don't have to vote. Sure, this is an information pending action. Any questions at this time, discussion, anything? Okay, great. That's time to move into reports. And Dr. Moore, would you like to share the informational calendar with us? Uh, yes, we have um, several meetings next week. We have our council meeting on Monday the 19th, the Facility Advisory Committee meeting on April 20th, a PTA meeting for Center on the 21st, Budget Advisory on April 22nd, 
and our next board meeting will be on the 27th, our regular meeting. And our final parent education night with Dr. Gephardt will be uh, on April 29th. Okay, thank you for that. Um, item B is the posting of the financial statements for the high school ASB, always posted for review for anyone. Uh, item 8C is the list of cash receipts, uh, the cash report. Do you uh, have anything you have to add to that, Dr. Moore? No, we've seen that before. Excellent. Okay, that brings us to item nine, announcements, correspondence, and reports, which means board member report time. So, Mike, we'll go ahead and start with you. Sure. Just I'll make it really brief. Um, Scrock had a hiatus for the Easter spring break. So I'll be going to attend the board meeting this week. And so I'll have a comprehensive report for you on Scrock uh, at our next meeting. And um, don't want to steal any thunder from the high school because they have a bunch of announcements coming out in regards to the activities and the end of the year. And so it's best that I leave all that for them to uh, gain ground on and and promote and uh, and so I don't steal any thunder. I'll just wait and uh, report them after they're all made and and discussed in detail and and stuff. So, but I do want to just make a couple of comments. Um, tonight's agenda uh, included just dozens of construction um, items, contracts, um, approval of in the consent and action items. And I just want everybody out there to, to understand that uh, these are heavily regulated by the state, by the Department of Education, um, and they're vetted through subcommittees and committees that include community members and people in the community that are invested in overseeing these and vetting them and watching the numbers and Internally, we watch it administratively and as board members, um, the amount of information we're get, getting sometimes is actually overwhelming uh, at the amount of information that we're getting and, and having to sift through it all. Um, and I know that the board is because the questions that are being asked that we're uh, privy to are, are very comprehensive. And so um, I just want to assure everybody out there that in regards to this construction and um, and, and prior to the uh, Easter break, we went on a tour. Um, some of the uh, uh, board member Wheaton and I uh, walked the facilities after seeing many of the projects. So the oversight also is given to us to look at the quality control and look at those items and to notice things and to bring up questions actually at the very sites after the construction is done. So um, we are looking at all these things. We are seeing them all from the beginning to the end. And this has been an ongoing process with the previous board from last year through us and now. And so just know that it's, it's, very, it's done very comprehensively and the administration at the district level is providing us a lot of information and uh, ample opportunity to review all of it, look at the finances behind it and see, and I can tell you this is, what I'm really glad to see is the percentages of change orders and unforeseen reasonable things that go on during construction um, have all been, been within those limits that were projected. Nothing's been egregious out of order or anything that hasn't been, um, you know, kind of thought through and so budgetarily and so um just know that it's 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 going extremely well in regards to how the money's being spent and our tax dollars at work in that sense so i just wanted to bring that item up because this agenda did include just a lot of those kind of construction items tonight um that being said and i said i was going to wait till the end i'd like to thank our student services um assistant superintendent dr janicek Mr. Brandon, Ms. Leonard on the presentation, Mr. Guana for all the technology and Dr. Plotkin, um, who is this team in regards to student services. And I don't know if people understand that it also includes um, our special needs students, um, our at-risk students, our high achieving students. And so it encompasses uh, the spectrum of 
those services that our students receive, not just the iPad and, and um, it has to do with the curriculum and the instructional um, development. Uh, it has to do with all those items. And so it's very comprehensive and uh, they do an amazing job here uh, as a teacher, you know, as a parent um, and now board member, I can tell you, I'm, I'm very proud of that aspect of our schools. And I'm very grateful to the hard work that they all put in in regards to those. And um, that being said, um, you know, I'd like to address something that I think is coming up. And, um, you know, there's been some discussion in our community about, uh, you know, returning to a full time schedule and a full schedule. And, you know, um, you're seeing some very, um, uh, you know, rapid changes in other districts and you're hearing things, but I would ask that all those members of our community, if you're hearing things like, oh, they're going back to a full time schedule or they're hearing this, that they go and investigate because the theory and practice are two different things. And uh, we have done such a good job of staying ahead of the curve and being thoughtful about how we proceed. And I can tell you as a teacher at the ground level, um, some of the decisions to go back full fully are impetuous and they're pretty uh, it, it's putting kids at risk in a lot of ways. And I think the way that our board and our administration at this district is approaching it is the most solid form that we could be in right now. Um, you know, we made a decision to take things and do them the right way. And I think we are, and I would just uh, ask people to go and investigate and see how quickly they are actually moving because there's so many stakeholders and so many moving parts in regards to what is being decided at a board level that I don't know if the actual implementation is occurring at the school sites. And it's something to be said about how we're doing it and how we're maintaining and benefiting our students by keeping this schedule that we have created for our district. And so, um, and, and there's another consideration that I hope our community would keep in mind is, is that the welfare of our admin and our teachers uh, right now, we have to com consider those impacts that it would have on them and them as stakeholders too in this. And uh, so, I, you know, and, and that means our district admin, it also means our at school admins and, and, our, and our teachers. So uh, again, I would ask that they go and investigate those things fully before believing the hype of certain things. And I would ask that they, you know, consider all the stakeholders and investments and um, the logistics of it all too. Cause I think uh, those things are very important to consider in making those decisions uh, because it's easy to say, we just want to get them back and, you know, they need to be back and, but what does that mean? And so there, there's a lot of moving parts. And so, um, and I would love to discuss it with anybody that wants to discuss it in full and I'll make myself available to you as a community member um, so that I can better explain it, you know, because I don't want to take up too much time here or open a can of worms, but I would love to discuss it with anybody that that would want to because I think the the direction we're moving right now is is really solid. I think it's it's very pragmatic and I think we're doing a great job for our students right now. So I just wanted that to be known and, and thank you to the admins and the teachers and everyone that's back working so hard for our students. It's making a huge impact. Thank you guys. Okay, thank you, Mike. Uh, Daima, your turn. Thank you. So I just wanna start off by saying that I hope you all have had a restful and relaxing spring break. We have experienced a year like unlike any other. And so I ask that we each take a moment to give ourselves the grace and those around us the same grace we need to move forward successfully together. And with that, I'll give an update on my areas. The first is council. Coming up, we have the jump for education. So not the run for education. This year it's special, it's the jump for education. Please register by April 22nd. There will be free jump ropes handed out, so you can pick those up. And that's great because that's local. The Jump for Education will be held May 1st through May 31st. And the council, the next council meeting is April 19th. That's next Monday at 6 p.m. 
for Center Street. The next council, excuse me, the next PTA meeting will be on Wednesday, April 21st. But I just want to talk about the new act that was released. It was released one week before spring break, and it was a great way to test it. This one is it's individualized and it allows you to have your child's name as well as ask specific questions like did you leave the state things that are important and gives our school district the information what i like about it related to center street um, when, again when we talk about the primary levels is that you can send your kid to school with a phone with a picture of it with uh, you can print it out so these are things so that they scan them at the gate, it's easy, they get in and we keep everyone safe with the information and, and that's important because we're keeping that communication. And you answer a series of questions, if it returns a green screen, then you are clear to return to school. So that is important, that's us working as a community together. And lastly, we have the budget advisory committee that is next week as well, it's Thursday, that is April 22nd at 3.30 p.m. That is a closed session. And that is it for me. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dayuma. Paulette, would you like to share? Sure. Um, I went to the uh, Health and Safety Committee meeting and we looked at the latest and greatest um, new requirements for the COVID, and which we all know now six feet down to three feet and that kind of thing um and travel advisory don't travel more than 120 miles away from home and if you do quarantine and so that that committee we look at the latest and greatest updates i also attended a zoom meeting i thought was really interesting um about calsters because you know we all well we do on the board here about calsters all the time, and I had some questions like how did we get into a deficit position where you know we have to be how did calsters get into that position where the district has to pay more to um, get us out of that position? And I, I learned some things that that calsters and maybe calpers too. They were just talking about calsters is guaranteed by the state of California constitution that we are kind of protected by law that they will maintain us and make sure that we stay um, solid I thought that was interesting and they are on a path to being fully funded so that they we will not be required to give them extra money by 2049 they hope to be fully 100 percent funded and the reason that they're not funded is because all of the, the you guys probably know this, but um, the downturns, and there's been about three or four of them, and they, that's how we, we lost portfolio. And that's that was interesting. And I, another interesting point from that was that there are over 400 members in CalSTRS who are over 100 years old. Yeah, I had the same reaction, Tracy. I'm, oh my God, that's really amazing. So, interesting things and oh that's it for me okay was it and i'm i wish you all well great thank you paulette and emily your turn been a little quiet the east uh, spring break um was refreshing i hope everyone else had um some nice quiet time as as we did um but other than that, I think as people can tell, we come back to a A through X consent agenda item. So things are still going on uh, while we aren't meeting. And um, you know, we had a break from the school sub but city subcommittee with with it falling in spring break. So not much to report there. And um, I know we're already scheduling special board meetings coming up. So rest is over, everyone back. <laughs> And I, I just, I want to thank the district, you know, as Mike kind of touched on, um, you know, having our kids back. We have had kids back in this district since before Thanksgiving. No one else can say that. Um, I will one other district. Um, but I, I think as we start moving and, and changing things, I think it's important that we look at where our kids are, um, what we're striving for, um, what 
our teachers have devoted and done and and we're thankful and, and I hope everyone is thankful and we are watching things as a board. Um, but being back five days a week doesn't mean being back full time five days a week um, and it doesn't mean full instruction. So I, I think we need to watch what is best for our children in the next little bit. And I, I know I'm committed to, to hearing and looking and seeing and that might not mean five days a week. It might mean smaller class sizes and, you know, more um, valuable time with with the small groups. Um, but I would put it out there that this is for this time only. You know, this is it's already April 13th, believe it or not. Um, but I am uh, what we are currently doing and looking at and is not. Uh, what we are going to be doing next year, hopefully, and, and that's why I think there's some buzz out there that that we're kind of settling into. We like this schedule and this is what it's going to be. That's not what's happening. Um, we are just looking at current mandates and, and needs to to finish off this year and next year is a whole new open slate that we will um, adjust and, and do accordingly as much as we can. And I think any parent that doesn't believe this district's gonna push the envelope hasn't been watching what we've been doing. So we are there, we will do it. Um, just give us, give us some time and we'll figure it out. So that's it, thanks. All right, thank you, Emily. I'll try to make it quick myself. You know, when we have that bonus week, that fifth Tuesday of the month, it really throws me off. It's like I haven't seen you guys in forever, and then we have all this work we catch up on. It's it's quite a quite a long break there, uh, but happy to be back and making things happen with you all. Uh, but since our last meeting, I have plenty of time to be informed and entertained on Department of Health calls that have happened regularly. Again, yes, we know things are still changing. You know, we are as Mike and Emily said. Paying attention to all that, very thoughtful about how we progress. And yes, we have been at the forefront of delivering the best education opportunities to our students uh, while doing it very safely all along. So we will continue to monitor what our options are and what makes the most sense for our community. So rest assured that is not going to stop with our way of moving forward. Um, and all those bond items that we did talk about and approve tonight do make me want to reiterate my appreciation for the facilities advisory committee and the citizens oversight committee, because they are invaluable community partners as we move forward in these big, big projects. Uh, that whole team of folks, Frank being one of them on this call tonight, um, their insight is invaluable and, and having them alongside our, our staff and telecu. -Que, is an amazing partnership and I, I trust them all deeply for what they're doing and how thoughtful they're being about how we spend this money and how we make the most of it for our students now and for generations to come. So it's it's an amazing process to be part of um, and, and continually thoughtful and smart. Um, yeah, other than that, I can't say we did much on spring break other than sit around the house staring at each other, but that's okay sometimes and that's a safe thing to do. That's what we did here. It was restful. I'm glad for that. But I will tell you next week is Earth Week. And so I will say happy Earth Week to everyone in advance and get out there and think of some new green practices that you can put in place. You can always be learning and improving upon how you help take care of this planet. So that is my wish for everyone to make the most of that next week and beyond. So that's all for me. Dr. Moore, your turn. Great. <clears throat> Uh, I'm building on uh, some of the thoughts that member Wagner shared and vice president lane shared. I did want to just provide a brief update as the board knows we're always looking. We're always seeking to gather information. And so at this time today, we distributed a survey to our elementary hybrid teachers to find out their thoughts as it relates to making a change in the schedule. And tomorrow, our um, teachers will be um, uh, distributing the survey to our elementary parents uh, to get their um, thoughts about this. Uh, during the spring break, uh, Mr. Ali Rabihi, Director of Operations, and I uh, did take a look around to see what can our rooms handle as it relates to more desks in a classroom if we were to shift 
to the three feet. So we're in information gathering mode at the secondary, but at the elementary, we did determine that it's doable. Uh, however, we will need to order some more desks. So we don't want to do it if we don't have our stakeholders behind us. So it's important that we find out what are our teachers thinking about this. It's important that we find out what are the parents thinking about this. So uh, we have the survey going out. We'll be gathering that information over the next week. Uh, tomorrow in our leadership meeting, our secondary team will be meeting in a small group with me, Ms. Janicek, to discuss uh, what are the highest class sizes at the, uh, at the secondary level and what will class uh, classes can hold as it relates to the number of students in a particular classroom. If there are, for example, let's say five classes that are at a higher number uh, and a room can only accommodate 28 desks and the three feet guidance, are there larger spaces at that campus <coughs> to handle that? <coughs> I'm sorry, I've got a tickle in my throat handle a, an additional space. <clears throat> so we plan to bring presentation to the board at the April 27th board meeting with that data to share with you and determine whether or not an additional recommendation <clears throat> or action should be taken at that time. In closing, I also want to just end with some good news. Our biomed pathway at El Segundo High School was recently featured in the UCLA Department of Anesthesiology and Perioperative Medicine. And so I'll be sharing this with our board um, tomorrow, but it's community engagement in a pandemic. UCLA anesthesiologists support STEM education for local high schoolers. And they actually have a picture of our kids on a Zoom call um, here in, um, Tracy and I happen to join them and I'm just really proud of this pathway. This is a pathway that was born out of the needs of the high school, the needs of our society, the needs of our community and supported by our ed foundation. And so this is just a win for all of us here in our district when we have these opportunities. So we're very proud of that pathway for those teachers, for the efforts that they do. In addition, I received word today that one of our scholars at El Segundo High School was selected as a 2021 Edison Scholar. And this is an extremely competitive and prestigious um, opportunity. And the young man who was selected from El Segundo High School is Gideon Telhoun. And Gideon is, uh, here's his picture right here. And so Gideon has a statement here that as an industrial engineer, I will learn how to improve processes, which will aid in my quest to help input advanced technology in third world countries. My advancements in engineering will help tear down racial barriers and allow students of color who come after me to know they can achieve anything. Gideon not only participated in the Boeing internship program, which is tremendous opportunity for our kids, but also serves as the director of activities for the Little Ethiopia Culture and Resource Center. He's in the engineering pathway, and he plans to help bridge race, religion, and income gap that impacts the STEM field. And he is El Segundo High School basketball team captain and co-president of the Black Student Union. This is so important because this is, he will receive a $40,000 college scholarship to pursue his dream. So this is, this is a huge, huge opportunity and they select, I believe, uh, 30 students uh, annually. So through Southern California Edison, what a gift to one of our brightest in, uh, students and congratulations to Gideon and his family. So just another good news of things are going well here in El Segundo. So thank you all. That was a great bit of good news to end on. Congratulations from all of us, Gideon.
Okay, well, let's see our closing items. Uh, there are no oral communications from the audience in our virtual mode. We will not recess to close section this evening. And with that, we can say good night and adjourn at 628 PM. So thank you everybody. Good night.